What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the CPA Zone, the podcast where we discuss tax strategies and accounting tips for entrepreneurs and real estate investors. My name is Ryan Pulis, and our company, The Pulis Group, offers tax planning and advisory services for entrepreneurs like you. Whether it's bookkeeping, tax planning, or CFO services that you're looking for, we've got you covered. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the CPA Zone. Today, we're going to talk about how you can invest in real estate and still achieve tax benefits, even if you don't qualify as a real estate professional. So most real estate investors that are familiar with the tax benefits that come from investing in real estate know the crown jewel of real estate tax strategies involves qualifying as a real estate professional. Now, the real estate professional status is an exception to the default passive treatment for rental real estate. Real estate professionals can deduct their losses from rental properties as long as they materially participate in those properties after they achieve the real estate professional status. But what about everyone else? Real estate professional status is not easy to achieve. First, you need to show 750 hours of material participation in real property trades or businesses for the year. And on top of that, more than 50% of your time must be spent materially participating in real property trades or businesses. So that eliminates most people with a W-2 job. So today we're going to look at other ways investing in real estate can save you money in taxes. So let's get into it. First, we have something called, there's a special allowance of up to $25,000 for active participation by non-professionals. So this is the exception for active participation. So as long as your income, your modified adjusted gross income is less than $100,000, you're allowed to deduct up to $25,000 against your ordinary, against your other active income for losses in rental real estate. So we mentioned your income has to be $100,000 or less so that $25,000 uh, exception or allowance is phased down 50 cents for each dollar your income's above 100,000, and then it totally phases out at 150. So, for example, if your your modified adjusted gross income is 120 thousand dollars, that re- that 25 thousand dollar allowance is going to be reduced by 10 thousand dollars because 50 percent of the 20k over 100 reduces it by 10 thousand dollars. Now you have a 15 thousand dollar special allowance, so you deduct 15 thousand against your your other active income. The second thing you need to achieve, other than the income limitation, you have to show active participation. So this is a much lower bar than material participation. To actively participate, the IRS says you must own at least 10% of the property and you have to make management decisions. So for example, you can approve leases or arrange for others to provide services. So it's easy to to show active participation, even if you have a property management company in place. So there's number one, the special allowance of $25,000 for active participation. Next, we have the short-term rental loophole. So we've covered this on past episodes, so you can check those out to get the details. But in short, you can deduct your losses from short-term rentals. That's any rental with an average customer stay, of seven days or less, as long as you materially participate in the rental activity. So that's not as easy as it sounds. Generally, you're going to show, you're going to have to show that you spend at least 100 hours and more than anyone else performing tasks that impact the operations of your properties. It's doable even with a full-time W-2 job, but it's not as easy as it sounds. You don't just buy a short-term rental and start deducting your losses. You have to show this material participation. Another option or another way, I should say, that you save taxes by investing in real estate is positive cash flow with a tax loss, even if that loss is suspended. Can't deduct your losses, we get it. They're suspended. But that positive cash flow means you're receiving money tax-free. So let's say, uh, actually, you know, they, they say you make your money on the purchase of real estate. So this is key here for this particular strategy. So if you buy, buy wisely, you should have property that cash flows. So that's important step number one buying a property that cash flows. This means your cash income is greater than your cash expenses. But when you add in depreciation, a non-cash expense that's based on the value of the building, you'll have, you'll often have positive cash flow, but show a loss for tax purposes. So that's actually pretty common, especially if you buy wisely. 
So for example, let's say your property generates $10,000 a month in rental income and you have cash expenses that are $7,000. That's $3,000 left over for you. That's your positive cash flow. Now let's say your property also is allowed a $4,000 depreciation deduction. Here's your non-cash expense. You still have $3,000 positive cash flow, but now you have a $1,000 loss for tax purposes. So you just increased your income by $3,000 and you pay zero tax on it. Now it's true you have depreciation recapture. So later when you sell a property, that depreciation gets recaptured and it's in its tax because when you sell a property, your gain is calculated based on the adjusted basis. So that's after the depreciation deductions, but you're probably going to have suspended losses that help free that up. And you, the time value of money, you're getting the tax free income now to use and you don't have to worry about depreciation recapture until some point in the future when you sell it. Now, there are ways to defer depreciation recapture in the capital gains tax, for example, a 1031 exchange. So this is yet another example of some of the tax benefits that come from investing in real estate. So a 1031 exchange allows you to trade your real estate for new real estate without paying any tax on the deal. That's assuming it's properly executed and meets all the 1031 rules. Again, we did an episode on this before. So if you want to go back and listen to the episode about 1031 exchanges, you'll get a bit more detail of how that works. But a properly executed 1031 exchange defers capital gains and the depreciation recapture that would have otherwise been due on the sale into the future as long as you trade real estate for real estate. Now, Again, some point, 1031 is just deferring taxes. At some point, if you sell, you're still going to, you're going to pay tax, the capital gains and all that deferred depreciation recapture on the sale. But with proper estate planning, there's something it's commonly referred to as swap till you drop. You can 1031 to bigger and bigger deals. And then when you die, you leave the real estate to your heirs. They receive a step up in basis, which effectively resets the value of the real estate to the fair market value on the date of death. And that permanently locks in those gains. And now the deferred the deferred capital gains, deferred depreciation recapture, locked in, they become tax-free. Not for everyone, but it's definitely doable. I've seen people that do it. We have clients that do it. Definitely an option out there. There's also what we call a 10 thir- lazy 1031 exchange. So there's two versions of this really. And I, and I hear... Lazy 1031 used with both. So let's first talk about just using your suspended losses upon the sale of your property to offset the gains. So you'll be able to find how much you have in suspended passive losses on form 8582 of your tax return. So this, this shows your accumulated suspended losses. Because remember, your, your suspended, your losses from real estate, even if you can't deduct them, they're just suspended. They don't go away. So they carry forward until you can use them. So you may not have enough, even if you sell and you don't have enough suspended losses to offset the entire gain, you can offset a significant portion of it. And if you don't plan to sell or perform a 1031 exchange, you can still see tax-free cash flow in future years by utilizing those suspended losses. So let's say you invest in real estate throughout your career. Your income's always been too high to deduct your losses. These losses accumulate carry forward. You'll see them on form 8582. At some point, your rental income is going to exceed your expenses, even if it's just simply due to inflation. Rents historically have gone up each year, and many of your expenses, some will be, some are going to raise with inflation too. Others will be fixed if you have a fixed rate mortgage. So that that delta between your rental income and expense is generally going to continue to grow. So at some point, you're going to have taxable income, or you're going to have income but you're going to use your suspended losses to reduce it to zero and not pay tax on it. Now, depending on the amount of your suspended losses, you might see tax-free income for years, even after your real estate's fully depreciated. Now, that's going to depend on your own individual circumstances, but it's not uncommon to see that happen. Now, the second version of the Lazy 1031 exchange is this occurs when you sell a property and in the same tax year, you buy a new property, you perform a cost seg study and accelerate the depreciation. That accelerated depreciation can be used to offset the gains from the property you sold. Now, the key is this all has to happen in the same year. 
If you sell a property, you have to buy the new property and have everything done in the same tax year. Now the cost sake study itself doesn't actually have to be done in the same tax year you have until you file that tax return. So we just filed 2023 taxes that they were due April 15, 2024. If you file an extension, you have until October to file your 2023 return. So that means if you wanted to get a cost sake study done on a property you placed in service in 2023, you don't actually need that cost sake study done and in hand until October of 2024. And you probably don't want to push it that close but you get the point. It doesn't have to be done by the end of the year. Only the purchase of the new property it needs to happen in the same tax year as the year that you sold a property for, if you want to offset those gains. So to summarize, we have several different ways real estate benefits you from a tax perspective without qualifying as a real estate professional. If your income is under $100,000, you, you can use the special allowance that allows for up to $25,000 as long as you actively participate there's short-term rentals. You can deduct your losses as long as you materially participate. If you purchase right, you have positive cash flow with no taxable income and often a tax loss. The 1031 exchange, you can keep trading up into new, bigger, and better properties without paying tax. You can go with the swap to you drop strategy and leave those properties to your heirs. Tax-free, they get a reset in the fair market value and lock in the gains and the deferred depreciation recapture. Or you can use perform the a lazy 1031. Use your suspended losses in the year of sale. Use those suspended losses going forward into the future to offset taxable income. Or with the lazy 1031 alternative option where you sell a property, buy a new property, perform a cost sake study, and accelerate depreciation. So those are some examples of how investing in real estate can help from a tax perspective, even when you don't qualify as a real estate professional. I hope you found value in this episode. Please leave us a five-star review and hit the like and subscribe button. Until next time, have a great day. So that about does it for this episode of the CPA Zone. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found something valuable that you can take away. We are taking on new clients, and if you'd like to work with us, then go to our website and fill out the client intake form on our contact page. This can be found at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com forward slash contact.